Hi everyone, welcome to the good news. My name is Josh Shively and I'm your host. This is a show where we bring you three pieces of good news every single day, rain or shine, snow or sleet. We just had a little snowstorm pass by the setting up. It was very beautiful. This is a show where we bring you those three pieces of good news because to remind me, to remind you that there's a whole lot of good in this world if we choose to see it. And that while there is bad news, and we're not trying to ignore it, and it's important, we need to also celebrate the good news and the good things about humanity because humanity is awesome. And I hope to help rehumanize humanity with these stories. I hope the show brings you joy and I hope it changes your day. I hope it makes your day a little bit better if it's already going great. And if it's not going so great, I hope it makes it better. All right. Our first story is about Jessica Benzakine. She was 12 years old and in foster care. She remembers when her caseworker, Ron, and he wasn't trying to be mean when he said this, but it's pretty intense. He said, your mother has terminated her parental rights. What's your plan B? She had no idea what a plan B was. She didn't even have a plan A. She, he, he went on to ex ex explain that she was too old to be adopted. After you're five years old, adoption, the, the, the chances you're adopted go through the floor. And 12 years old, that's like, wow. She remained in foster care until she was 18. No one adopted her. She went to college. She spent Christmas alone. And she vowed after getting out of school she wouldn't ever spend Christmas alone again. She got into foster care to help people in her situation. And she started fostering sets of kids, sets of, you know, uh, brothers and sisters, which apparently is a very challenging thing to do. People don't like to keep them together. They split them up. I don't understand why, but I'm sure there's at least some reason they think logically it makes sense. And so she started fostering sets of kids and I'm sure and and she continued to do so and the story centers around a couple really good pieces of good news the, the main piece is that she just now last last week adopted six boys will 18 years old Sydney 13 Markle and buddy related eight years old and Terrell TJ four years old she said she set up her her house to be the the the, fa the home that she dreamed she would have when she was bouncing around foster care. She was a kid. There's a basketball hoop in the living room. She says we have fun here. They have pizza nights and movie nights on Fridays and a whole bunch of other activities, including dance parties. I just want to repeat that we have fun here. She wanted to center it around having fun. She's letting these kids be kids and have a life and have the things she didn't get and have a childhood that they might not have had before, they might not have had ever. And she said she went through her 20s, didn't think she really needed a family, but she did. She said, she said I went through my 20s thinking I'd real, I didn't really need a family, but I did. They gave me purpose. She's been fostering these kids for a while and the adoption is now formal. And she says, now no one can tell us <laughs> that we're not a family. They are a family officially. Awesome, Jessica. Our next comes from Raymond, Mississippi, where a couple created a fundraiser to cover the cost of adoption. Forty to fifty thousand dollars is what it costs to adopt a kid. That blew me away. I knew it was expensive, but wow. And it's also extremely time consuming. So they posted what why they started this fundraiser before they knew how expensive it was. Um, they weren't able to have a child and they put up a, you know, people put on Facebook and social media, they put up uh, the we're expecting, you know, cute Instagram kind of like we're expecting a, you know, a kid kind of announcement. They put one up that says we're adopting and they made it look like that. It was really cute. And then they learned how expensive it was. And so they came up with a great creative idea for a fundraiser. They came up with the idea for people to put change, their loose change, spare change, we all have it, in baby bottles and in whatever bottles you want really, but it's funny, a lot of people end up sending baby bottles, as they ask, and sent them and dropped them off at their house. And people around the country start mailing in and their communities start dropping off these baby bottles full of change. And they have tons of them coming in. There were 80 of them at the time when, uh, when the time in which we're reporting this or sharing this rather, and their, their, their community, it's working. What a creative, beautiful idea to, to, to connect with the emotion of, of, of a child, of having a child. I just love the creativity of that and then the community support. 
um, yeah, that's just beautiful. All right, our last story comes from uh, this is about this is, comes from Palm Beach, Florida, and it's about a big dog who was rescued from Hurricane Dorian. This beautiful big brindle dog. It's a mix. They didn't say what kind it was because I don't know that you can tell. This dog was found in the Bahamas after Hurricane Dorian, which had 185 mile an hour per wind uh, per hour winds, and the dog was stuck under rubble, pinned against, between an air conditioner and the ground for three days. It was riddled with parasites, emaciated, and it had been just drinking the water that puddled up, the rainwater that puddled up around it to survive. Rescuers found it, and they rescued the dog along with 200 other rescues from the rubble and destruction, which just looked apocalyptic, it was crazy. 200 dogs were flown to Big Dog Rescue Ranch, and I'm gonna mess this up, in Lakahatchee? I lived in Florida, so I should know that, but uh, Lockahatchee, Florida, Big Dog Rescue Ranch, rescued 200 dogs. This is so cool. That's good news in its own. That's just a piece of the story, but like, wow, right? And the rescuers had named the dog Miracle. Now Miracle has been adopted by a Palm Beach couple and their kids and has undergone a ton of therapy and support, uh, excuse me, um, uh, uh, treatments for parasites and heartworms and uh, sore stomach and all kinds of things from being basically left for dead for three days and abandoned under rubble <clears throat> and the Big Dog Rescue Ranch has been covering those costs as well which is really cool and the re the, and, and now survives on a special diet of CBD and special food and by the way Big Dog Rescue Ranch was able to do that because companies really cool this one CBD company and a couple other companies um, they gave money for specifically to fund Big Dog Rescue Ranch to go down there and do that. And I want to surface that specifically because we, you know, a lot of us have jobs. And if you have a job and you work at a big, co at a company, like a, you know, a company that could do something like this, companies have set aside money for corporate giving. A lot of them do. And if they don't, you can nudge them towards that. But you could always go during one of these disasters and you can say, hey, what's our company doing towards this? And can I help facilitate something? And you could maybe be the person to facilitate something during that, the Australian wildfires, you know, hurricanes, whatever it might be. Because someone had the idea of contacting this ranch company. It didn't just happen and said, hey, hey boss, hey friend, hey, hey employees, what do you think we all do this? And went out and did that. So remember, like you might not have the cash to give, but like someone around you might, and you can be the facilitator of that kind of thing. All right, so the story is is beautiful. The, the one last piece of the story that, that I love most is that they say that the greatest joy of having Miracle that this family has is when they take Miracle out in public and they get to share the story of Miracle with all of these people that, that come into contact with this beautiful dog and they hope that it inspires people to go and they said I hope lots of people go get a Miracle of their own and it's just another story of how this kindness and how kindness in general is contagious and when we've t we've got so many stories of kindness and contagious and when someone does something another person does it another person does it so let's share more things like that with the world let's do more kind things and our quote today lines with that no act of kindness no matter how small is ever wasted Aesop thank you so much everyone that's our show and remember courage is contagious so is kindness and that's the good news pass it on Thanks for watching.